Hi everyone, it's Laura and I hope you're all doing well. So today I wanted to give you all some tips on becoming a vegetarian. So I've been a vegetarian for quite some time now. It's been a while since I have had any meat. And I'm also a registered dietitian. So I thought it'd be cool to kind of combine the knowledge of both sides and give you all some tips. If you're someone who is interested in decreasing meat or becoming a vegetarian, or if you are already on that path, then here are some tips to help you out. So my first tip is to really understand why you're doing this. Because depending on where you live, depending on your friends, your family, your support system, you're gonna get a million and one questions. And I know it's more difficult in some areas than others. When I lived in Chicago, People would ask me why I'm a vegetarian, but it wasn't that big of a deal. But now that I live in Alabama, I get a lot more questions. And it's something that if you're not certain of yourself, if you're not confident as to why you're being a vegetarian or a vegan or decreasing the amount of meat that you eat, then it is easy for other people's opinions to get inside your head and to make you start question why we're doing something. And if this is something you really want to do, then just make a list of why. And really try and dissect why you're gravitating towards this lifestyle and what it is about it that's attractive to you. And as a result, when you get those million and one questions, which I promise you they'll come, then you'll have a response and you'll be confident and you'll know without a doubt that this is what this is you this is something that you're not wavering on this is part of who you are and i'm not gonna lie it took me a while to get to that point even after i had been a vegetarian for a couple years um and part of that is trial and error of your response to people's questions you get better the longer you are a vegetarian you get better at responding to the questions um so don't get discouraged if you have a conversation that goes poorly or not the way that you wanted it to. Use it to build for the next conversation. But there's a lot of positivity out there. A lot of people are super open to the idea of vegetarianism. They recognize that it's healthier, it's better for the environment, it obviously doesn't kill animals, and more people are becoming open to it. And so I'm just kind of this tip is more geared towards the people who are more skeptical of this lifestyle. Tip number two is to figure out quick and easy recipes that you can just throw together that make being a vegetarian easy. Because I know when I did eat meat, I had certain staple meals that if I didn't feel like cooking or if I didn't want to cook for a long period of time, I didn't want to spend a lot of time in the kitchen, I had these quick and easy go-to meals. And this is something that it's all based on your taste buds. I can't give you um, a list of quick and easy meals that you're going to like. It's all about trial and error and perfecting recipes. I do have recipes on my channel, so feel free to check those out. I love all of them. <laughs> um, but being able to find some that um, work for you. I know for me, some of my quick and easy recipes are I'll do like onion, quinoa, black beans, and I'll add taco seasoning, and then I'll just put it in a tortilla with some guacamole and some hot sauce. Super quick, super easy. Another quick one I do a lot is stir fries, so veggie stir fries, so just cooking up some brown rice with some mixed veggies, and then I love cashews, so just throwing some cashews in there with some soy sauce. Super quick, super easy. So kind of finding those go-to meals for you that work for you um, so that when, like I said, you're tired, you don't feel like putting a lot of preparation into meals, you already have those meals that don't take a lot of thought. So tip number three is more important for those of y'all who aren't in a big city, but when you're socializing and going out to eat with friends, looking up before what you're going to eat. And especially in Alabama, I will call ahead to the restaurant. If there's no vegetarian um, options on the menu, I'll call ahead and see if there's something we can work out. Um, I started doing this because I actually went to a restaurant with some friends and the only vegetarian option was on the kids menu and the waitress wasn't going to let me order it because I'm not a child. <laughs> you had to be like 10 and under. 
And I was just like, this is ridiculous. So I'm going to sit here and not eat because I'm choosing to be a vegetarian. You know, I'm not trying to be difficult. It's the lifestyle that I've chosen. So anyways, lesson learned. That was like right when I moved back to Alabama. So lesson learned, if there's no vegetarian options on the menu, then I will call ahead. Um, at the very least, I'll look at the menu before I go to the restaurant just to make sure there is something for me or something that can be made vegetarian just without the meat. Um, it really hasn't been a huge deal, um, but it is something to think about and it takes a little bit of preparation, which I'm fine with. So my next tip is to make sure you're getting all the nutrients you need. And this isn't just for vegetarians or vegans, it's for meat eaters as well. People don't realize that people that eat meat, it doesn't mean you're not gonna get any nutrient deficiencies. If you're eating a crap diet that isn't nutritionally dense, you can very well become deficient in certain vitamins and minerals, whether you eat meat or not. So I'm not giving you this tip solely because you're choosing to cut out any meat and flesh of animals. It's just a general tip. <laughs> um, and one of the ways to ensure that you're getting what you need is to consume a variety of colors and to eat the rainbow. <laughs> Not Skittles, don't eat Skittles. <laughs> you can eat Skittles if you want, but you know. So one of the ways that I make sure that I get everything I need is I actually use chronometer.com and I'll do it once in a while and just put in a typical day of what I've been eating lately and see what comes up low. It's basically like a nutrient tracker so you can put exactly what you eat for the full day and then it breaks it down in so much detail, every single nutrient. Um, and so what I will do is I'll do that every once in a while, put in what I've been eating lately and find some of the areas that I could improve on. Um, some of the areas I have been working on are selenium. I started eating a Brazil nut every day about a year ago. Um, also calcium and vitamin D. I make sure to do my non-dairy milk alternatives because to me that's just the easiest way to do it. I'm also in regards to the calcium good about consuming leafy greens and um, what was the other one? Oh, I came up low on omega-3s and so I do supplement with algae oil. It's something I don't do every day. I just keep the supplements in my desk and I just take one or two a week um, just to make sure that I'm getting everything that I need. And so that's something I highly recommend whether you're a vegetarian or you're not. Go to Chronometer, type in just a typical day of what you eat. It doesn't have to be to a T, but just on average, this is what I'll have on a typical day. And it'll show you where you're coming up short. And I guarantee whether you eat meat or not, there's gonna be some areas that you didn't realize that you were lower in that could be improved on. My last tip, and I feel like this is a tip in every single one of my videos, <laughs> but it's to eat as fresh as possible, to try your best to stay away from anything that's in a box or a bag, anything that's been processed, and as a result, you'll be getting the rainbow, you'll be getting fresh, wholesome foods, you'll be maximizing your nutrition, you'll be getting the most nutrient-dense foods on the planet, um, especially if you're plant-based, vegetarian, vegan. Anything coming from the ground is the most nutritionally dense foods you could possibly consume. You have to think of it in a way if a food can stay on the shelf for a year, I don't view it as food. To me, it's not food, unless it's something like rice that hasn't been cooked, beans that haven't been cooked. But anything that's been processed and made in a factory and can sit on a shelf for longer than my nephew's been alive <laughs> just is insane to me, and I try and avoid it as much as possible. Um, I would say that I'm not perfect when it comes to eating healthy. On a daily basis, I do eat extremely healthy, but there are times that I definitely indulge, and that's what works for me. Um, to me, what matters most is that I'm not hurting animals, that I'm doing my part in protecting the environment, and that in regards to my overall health, vegetarianism is how I, what I feel is the healthiest way to live. And so, as long to me as I don't eat meat, I'm eating as fresh as possible, 
I'm doing my best to live a healthy lifestyle. I exercise, I meditate, I get enough sleep. That's what matters most to me. Um, and so I really encourage you to figure out what works for you, what matters most to you. If it's vegetarianism, if it's veganism, if it's being more plant-based, then that's awesome. I fully support you. But at the same time, I would never want to push my beliefs on you if they're not what you believe as well. And so I do encourage you, just consider vegetarianism, consider decreasing your meat, and just see how you feel and go from there. If it works for you, awesome, great. If it doesn't, then it doesn't work for you. Um, and that's all. <laughs> so anyways, I hope this video helped you out. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Um, I hope y'all are having a great summer. I hope that life has been treating you well and that you're in a good place right now in life. And oh, also, I wrote a book. <laughs> And it's all about living a plant-based lifestyle. So I'll leave a link to that below as well. Be sure to check that out. My favorite part about the book is that I broke down every single nutrient and gave you excellent sources of every single nutrient. So this is especially good if you're someone who you want to make sure you're getting all your nutrients. It gives you examples and serving sizes and the percent of the recommended daily allowance and all that good jazz. So I'll leave a link to the, that below as well. And like I said, I hope y'all are doing well. And I'll see y'all in my next video. Bye.